Look at what I got! It's an IBM 5150 with... I've never even heard of these before. Personal computer expansion unit. This apparently has two hard drives in it. We've got the 5150 and the colour monitor. And if you look carefully, you can see how they do it. How utterly awesome! Now it's going to go up there, where those computers currently are. So... This one I may need to find a new home for, in fact I probably will. This one can just be pulled to bits, and it's like the DOS machine some of you may remember me setting up. Haven't done anything with it, not going to do anything with it. Plus it has a motherboard fault, which I have been unable to repair. The main thing is, is fitting this with this. But I'm not so keen on the idea of getting rid of this, and this is nice and small so I can stash it on the shelves in a little gap that I haven't filled in yet. So, bear with me, and we'll be back when this is in its new home. I haven't even switched it on and tested it yet, but apparently when it's last tested, which is god knows how many years ago, it did work. I don't have any software for it. And I am missing the cable from the expansion unit down here to the actual main computer unit up here. So, any operating system on here. Might need to do play some swapses with the hard drives or something. We'll see. But, get a view of the back because that's a good indication to the exact 5150 model to whether it's an early one or more modern one. But there's 5150! This is what we like to see. Good stuff. So yeah. <laughs> I'm very happy. Complete with colour monitors. So this gets priority placement because it's quite awesome and it is a holy grail. And it needs a good clean up at least if all the electronics are working. If they're not then it also needs a lot of work there. Any personal information that I find on the hard drive that I am to destroy, which is fair enough, that's good. I don't want to be publishing people's personal information, but that's such a score! Thank you! Accommodation, one of the people who were accommodation gave me this, because they used to be a professional in the computing field. Not anymore. Sadly. As long as you don't breach height limits, aka to the ceiling, or safety limits, aka weight limits of the furniture, it's all good. Get to keep the cool 95, and the IBM 5150 has home, and I'll pull it out and use it as and when. It's a heavy bastard, though. And, Mr. DOS machine that I set up last summer, it's going to have to go to Mr. Scrappy Heap, because, well, I don't have room for Mr. DOS machine, so we are strip this of parts and chuck out the rest basically. I can hear you all crying no! Well it was either that or that and I choose to keep that. It's far more interesting. So that says bye bye. Bye bye! Today's product is auxiliary first repairs of the 5150 personal computer dual floppy disk drives. Lovely! I already know what the problem is because I've had it open, tested it, and have discovered the horror of what I'm about to show you. Let's crack it open. I know you can identify these by just looking at the back to see whether it's an original original or a later original. So there's a shot of the back, see if any of you can identify it. I haven't been able to re-dig up the information I found on it a good while back at uni. So if any of you can save me the hassle of trying to dig that, spend god knows how long digging that back up, please do. It'd be interesting to know. So here's an auxiliary shot of the internals. Both the floppy disk drives, and then of course you've got the individual controller cards, which aren't microprocessor based, not like today's ones, if you can consider a floppy disk drive something of today. We've got several cards. This one's the graphics card, which is the EGA colour, which is absolutely humongous. Then we have the interface card to the bottom expansion unit. Then we have this mysterious card, which also has RAM on it. 
I think this is actually a clock card. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. Then we have a RAM expansion and some sort of DB interface, which is at the back somewhere. There. I'm not 100% sure what all these interfaces are, to be honest. This is very, very old generation. This is getting into when the stuff was still proprietary. But the beginnings of the standards of everything we use today, even that, can find its heritage in this beastie. And that's why we must restore it. Hmm. Motherboard doesn't like it screwed in, which is a good thing, I suppose. I'm going to start taking photos so I know where everything goes. The last thing I want to do is not know how to put it back together right and bang. And here is the internals. And you may notice some evil, evil, putrid, disgusting battery acid damage. Yep, folks. This is why the 5150 is currently in the land of the dead. So, I've either got to repair this motherboard, but I've learnt it's a multi-layer jobby, which means I'm actually be on the hunt for a new one of these motherboards. And there's the original processor. And this is the offending, evil, putrid, disgusting, despicable NICAD battery responsible for this mess. It shall be punished. We'll do something horrible to this battery for what it has done. Obviously, once we've removed the card. So we're going to remove that disk drive. So then we can remove the motherboard. I hope they're not too difficult to remove. I don't honestly know. Let's give it a go. It has not soaked through to the bottom of the motherboard. There's hope for this machine yet. Colour graphics. Colour spelt wrong, of course. <laughs> Since the boards are in a state of drying after being washed and de -acided, let's go through what these cards are. This one is the floppy disk drive controller or the drive controller I'm not quite sure what this interface is on the back it's a bit of a larger DB connector than I'm used to but it could be an early SCSI or whatever standard they were using back in 1982 or 1 this is your standard sort of IBM 5150 RAM expansion card complete with dip switches that even give you the amount probably binary values you have to enter wouldn't surprise me in fact, uh, yeah, that's a pretty plausible theory, actually. <laughs> this is the interface card to the expansion unit, which is basically a second IBM 5150 case, with more of these 8-bit ISA, ISA connectors on them. And finally, we have the EGA ISA graphics card, complete with the wrongly spelt colour graphics. But hey such as live, complete with a composite output and your standard EGA. And the boards are actually in relatively good condition and surprisingly clean, but then they're upright so they don't get all the dust gathered on top of them. Like the motherboards and the drives. When we get this thing fixed, we're going to give this thing a good, proper clean. Because it needs it badly. It's caked in dust and dirt and nastiness. I found a few dead spiders too. Currently in the process of evicting a spider from this floppy drive. Yep, it's still alive. And it seemed to have made a home in the disk drive. Makes me wonder what other... <laughs> you can see why I've mostly found dead spiders in this computer. <laughs> yeah, it's a computer that I've found... I've never found so many dead spiders in a computer, to be honest. And we've even got a live one. Spider's new home, behind the tumble dryer. He can live in the garage, continue to... Well, the new garage. A new garage for him. But he's not living in my IBM. The boards are taking yonks to dry, so... We're going to have to fire this thing up tomorrow. I'm not firing it up while the PCBs are still wet, because... Well... They could short circuit and make the problem worse. You don't want that. You want to keep the problem to a minimum and repair it. So, 
Thanks for watching part one of the IBM restoration. I don't know how many parts there'd be, hopefully, hopefully max three. Oops. <laughs> Just as a fun note, one of the chips here, this one, one of the RAM chips, Two pins fell off, so I soldered on some replacements. AKA, just stick some wire there. Sorted. I'm determined to get this thing operational. I can tell you that. Even if I have to remove chips and check underneath them, that will be what I do.